Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you and today we are going to talk about steroid half-life. So I'm going to break them down for you, give you an explanation and rundown so you really understand what they're all about. But before we get into that, just a big shout out and thank you to everybody out there supporting the channel. I cannot thank you enough. If you haven't yet, please like, sub, share, comment. Any interaction with the channel helps the channel to grow and it allows me to produce more and more content for you each and every day. Also, today's video is sponsored by Let'sGetCheck.com. Now, Let'sGetCheck.com specializes in at-home blood testing. All you have to do is go to the website, check out the variety of tests they have. They have them for men and women, full hormonal wellness. They've, they've got so many to pick from. Order your kits. They're going to ship them to you in the mail. You're going to get online, register them, provide the sample, ship them back. You're going to get results extremely fast. They'll notify you by email, and they've got doctors and nurses there to answer any questions or concerns that you might have. So check them out. Let's get check.com. Coupon code Jamelli30 is going to save you 30% off. All right. So I want to give a little bit of a breakdown here of steroid half-lives. I, I get a lot of questions about different things to do with steroid half-lives or, you know, how long is this need to be ran? How long is this in my system? I mean, a lot of different things. So I'm just, I want to explain the concept. It's nice to actually know a little bit about something as opposed to just getting a quick answer, but knowing why or what's the rhyme and reason here. So let's just kind of dig into that. So really the entire concept and idea of a half-life and half-lives is really important to the understanding. And it's not just about anabolic steroid use, but it's the use of any types of drugs, substances, foods even that you eat. Now, it's not just limited to steroid half-lives, all right, or, or even the half-lives of drugs. So really, in general, it's like it's a concept within science that applies to almost all phases of science, like your physics, biology, chemistry, things like that. There's different definitions of what a half-life is depending on the area of science that you're really studying. So there's different definitions, but they're, they're just a little different in terms of what they actually mean. So the, the general definition of a half-life is the same, but the dictionary definition of half-life in physics is something a little different. It's the time required for one half the atoms of a given amount of a radioactive substance to actually just disintegrate. Now, the dictionary definition of a half-life in terms of biology, that's a biological half-life or pharmacology. So it's the time required for the activity of a substance taken into the body to basically lose one half of its initial effectiveness. Now, we'll talk about informal um, and that's a brief period during which something is going to kind of flourish before it then phases out so the dictionary definitions are going to be a little dif different from one another but the general concept as it tains to biology and pharmacology is the time required for a substance drug or food to be reduced to half of the original administered dose once in the body so here's an example let's take 100 milligrams of test prop that's got a half-life of about four and a half days. So only 50 milligrams of the substance is going to be remaining in your body after four or five days. Now, the concept of steroid half-lives is really important to grasp because it allows you to really understand the amount of time that a particular steroid is actively remaining within your body after you take it. This is going to really help you in to plan better and to organize your cycle more appropriately and it's gonna really give you an understanding of how to properly time when you take most steroids to get the most effective cycle the, the safest possible cycle the proper understanding of half-lives is just really important for the understanding of how long it might take for a particular steroid or compound to reach its peak optimal blood plasma levels within your body and it's really important because the results and the gains that you're going to get from anabolic steroids don't really normally occur until these peak optimal blood plasma levels are achieved within your body so the longer the steroid half-lives are for a particular steroid the longer it's going to take for your gains to to kick in on cycle that's what when we say kick in that's what it means um it's an issue of safety and I'm going to tell you why. Without a proper understanding of the half-life of a drug, it's possible for you to take it and it hurt yourself, take it too much, not take it long enough. I mean, you could feasibly kill yourself if you don't know what you're doing with some of these. And really in general, you know, most of the time the, the wrong timing is really a bad experience. All right. It, it can increase 
side effects. It could throw you off mentally if you're, you're taking them at the wrong times. It's one of the very first things that you really need to understand before you start using steroids. Esters, you know, esterification. You need to understand that stuff. That, so the steroid half-lives themselves are affected by a few different things. All right. Three primary things we got here. We've got the route of administration, the esterification, and the resistance to metabolism. Now, the half-life is going to tell you how long that you need to dose it. So oral steroids, obviously, are going to have a much lower half-life than an injectable, especially an injectable with a longer half-life, DECA, Equipoise. So I am going to give you a list of common steroids and then the half-lives. I, I kind of um, go by memory in alphabetical order, at least I'm going to try. And I didn't take them all. I just take more of the mainstream commonly used ones i guess so anadrol you're looking like eight to nine hours now different sites are going to give you a little bit different things so i've just over the years this is what i've rolled with anavar is like nine hours deca you're looking at about two weeks 15 days um so a much much longer half-life d-ball you're like four and a half to six hours Equipoise is just like DECA, that 14 days. DECA is always reported 14, 15. Equipoise generally is just 14. Hala test in eight, it's like eight, eight and a half hours. Now, mast propionate, you're looking at about four and a half days. And then mast enanthate, seven to 10 days. Your NPP, your nandrolone phenylpropionate, about four and a half days. So if you're noticing a common theme here with the, the props, they're like three and a half, four and a half days, depending on where you read it. Omnidren is like Sustanon, all right? It's a four compound testosterone, 15 to 18 days, same with Sustanon. Then we've got Parabolin, which is like your Tren Hex. That's about 14 days, so that's a long one. Now your oral version of Primo, your Primo acetate is still two to three days, so longer for an oral than most. Uh, injectable Primo, seven to 10 days. Now your different testosterone esters, Cipionate, uh, you're going to see a wide variety of things here. Generally, it's seven to eight days, okay? And enanthate six to seven. You're going to see some places tell you 10 to 12 recipient, eight, eight to nine. I'm just going in the seven to eight, enanthate six to seven. Test prop, once again, appropriate four, four, four point five. 4.5. Um, test suspension, TNE, test no ester, two to four hours. Some have reported a lot, up to 40 hours, but generally it should be two to four hours. Trenace three days. So trenase a little bit shorter because it's not propionate, it's acetate. Uh, Tren enanthate, seven to 10 days. Um, Winstrol oral, we're looking about nine hours and then injectable Winstrol, you got like a 24 hour half-life. So these are common ones. I didn't cover every single steroid in existence, known to man, but I tried to give you the most common ones that are most widely used and that people are probably going to have the most questions on. It's, it's stuff that you can go look up and kind of find if there's other ones that I didn't cover. Um, just try to find a reputable website that you're going to to look for these. But, you know, understanding steroid half-lives. Under Listen, some of this stuff you, you're probably going, I don't need to know this, I don't need to know that. But you really do. And you really should want to. Um, as, when, you're, when you're dealing with anything that you do, but especially something like this, with the potential things that could occur and, uh, when we're talking about your body here, you should really be as educated as you possibly can. I try to help as much as I can, but you have to go do your own research too. This is part of it. This is a big part of it, but you still need to read more, understand, grasp more, ask questions, you know, things of that nature. You can't, you just load up on the information so you really know what you're doing. So that being said, stay tuned for plenty more to come. Dylan Jamelli signing off.